In this lesson, I'd like to give a short presentation that covers some of the terminology and concepts of the Migrate module, making it so that we can understand these things a little bit better before we start trying to write our own migration code. We're going to take a look at the architecture of a migration and the way that these pieces of code are structured. We're going to talk about the extract, transform, load process that the Migrate module uses in order to import data into Drupal. And finally, we'll take a look at the four key components that make up each of our own custom migrations. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to start out by just going through some of the components that make up the migrate module and a migration. Get some terminology out of the way and make sure that we're all on the same page when we talk about writing a migration of our own. So some basics about the migrate module. Uh, first off, the migrate module is architected using mostly object-oriented code. Um, most modules for Drupal 7 just use functional code, um, but if you've written plugins for views or worked with C tools, you've probably encountered object-oriented code before. If not, I would take a couple of minutes to brush up on some of the basics of object-oriented code in PHP. What this means for us is that the migrate module provides a bunch of base classes for doing things like dealing with source data or uh, destinations and so forth. The plugins for our migration are classes that we then extend in order to write our own custom migration. The migrate module provides a framework that allows us to write code that makes up our migration, but then also to run those migrations, um, keeping track of where our source data lives and where the destination data should go, running the migration, rolling it back if necessary, testing. It provides tools for instrumenting a migration so you can monitor performance and check and see why things are running slow and improve it for future runs of that migration and so forth. Uh, in addition to that, it also provides a fairly simple user interface for monitoring the status of a migration. You can run migrations using the UI, though I will recommend that you use Drush for running migrations. We'll talk about both options and, and why I prefer one over the other. But the UI does provide a really nice set of displays where you can see things like, for this migration, there are 100 rows of data that need to be imported. And so far, 75 of them have been imported. It also shows you things like these two rows failed, and here's some uh, additional information about why they failed. Finally, the UI is really great if you're working with a team of people in order to write a migration. You might end up in a scenario where you have you know, a couple of people that know the code and are working on the actual code that makes up the migration, but there's also stakeholders on the team who just kind of need to be able to review the state of things. They need to answer questions about how does this old data map to what it should be in the new system? Does this make sense? Uh, the UI provides some really nice collaboration tools for that. The migrate module itself and the migrations that we're going to write operate using this paradigm called extract, transform, load. The idea is that we should have separate pieces of code that perform each of these operations. And then the migrate module basically serves as the glue to tie them all together. This is a pretty common process for pieces of code that get data from somewhere and put it somewhere else. The idea is you have some code that is responsible for getting the data out of your source. Uh, so wherever you're migrating things from, the extract method is the code that extracts the data. Then there's a step where that data can be transformed. Things like in changing measurements, you know, maybe in the old system, everything was measured in centimeters and now it needs to be stored as inches. So transform might be performing the calculation to transform that. Transform might just be simply concatenating a couple fields together or cleaning up the source data so that it meets the standards of your destination. And then finally, there's the load operation, uh, or really just the code that is responsible for taking the transformed source data and saving it as a new record in the destination system. Source and destination are two terms that you'll hear a lot when talking about migrations, and you'll also see them a lot in the migrate code. What they refer to is source being the place that data lives currently. This might be an existing database. This might be an existing website. It might even be an already existing Drupal database. It's where this is where the data that I'm going to extract currently lives. And then you've got destinations. And in this case, with the migrate module, our destination is almost always Drupal. 
Uh, it's really geared towards that, taking data out of some different source and importing it into Drupal. So your source is, again, it's that access to your existing data. The migrate module implements a base class named migrate source, which we then extend or extend one of the already uh, implemented versions of that to extract our data from different sources like an SQL database or maybe a JSON file or a CSV file. There's lots of different places that this data could live. In addition to being able to extract the data from its current home, a source migration plugin also is responsible for describing that data to the migrate module. It has to be able to describe the different fields or chunks of data that are made up from the source. So if you have a CSV file, the source needs to be able to describe what each of the columns in that CSV file represents so that we know what we're dealing with when it comes time to try to map that data from the source to our destination. Finally, source plugins in the migrate module are responsible for looping over rows of source data. So extracting it, so extracting it from the database maybe, and then iterating over each individual row that was extracted and handing them to the migrate module one at a time so that it can perform transformations um, and then load each of those rows individually. And then there's destinations, also plugins that are built by implementing the migrate destination class. The migrate module provides a handful of these for us already, which we'll make use of. In this case, our destination is Drupal. And so one of these migrate destinations is responsible for really understanding the underlying aspects of Drupal. It needs to know that you're trying to save a node or a user and what that entails. And when I'm saving a user in Drupal, I want to call the user save function and make sure all those hooks trigger and so forth. Uh, the migrate module can take care of all of that for us because it understands each individual destination. We just have to tell it which one we want to use. And then the destination plugin is responsible for saving one new record of data for each source row. So the source iterates over the individual rows extracted from whatever that source is, and then the destination is responsible for saving each one of those rows individually. In addition to this concept of a source and a destination and the plugins that make up those, there's also a concept of field maps in the migrate module. And what field maps are used for is as part of your migration, the custom code that you're writing, you need to tell the migrate module that this specific field in our source maps to that specific field in our destination. An example of that might be something like the email field in our CSV file maps to the email field in the user table within Drupal. And we'll talk more about these field mappings quite a bit. This is kind of the, the meat of what makes up most migrations. So our field maps provide a link between source fields and destination fields. In addition to that, they also provide some basic functions for transforming those values. Uh, some really simple things like concatenating fields together. Uh, they also allow us to write any of our own custom code to perform that transformation. Uh, another thing that you end up doing a lot when writing custom migrations is you have to perform some transformation of the source data. You have to change it up a little bit so that it fits the requirements of your new Drupal node or your user or whatever the case may be. Uh, we do that using field maps as well. And then there is migration maps which are different than field maps, though a similar concept. It's all about mapping a record of source data to a record of destination data. In this case, we're mapping each individual row. A map in a migration keeps track of the unique ID of source data and the unique ID of the destination data. And it allows us to, in the future, do things like look up the ID of the user that was created when row 22 from our CSV file was imported. This is important because we're going to need to be able to do things like that. Look up the ID of a user that was created so we can use that ID in other parts of our migration. But it also allows for us to do things like roll back a, a migration. Because of the fact that we have this map that knows both the destination ID and the source ID, we can call rollback functions that will delete just the appropriate destination records, but leave any that were created not as part of the migration intact. 
And finally, it, it also means that we can update destination records. If you change the source data, rather than importing a whole bunch of new rows, with this map in place, we can actually update an already existing row, uh, which is a really powerful concept. And if you combine all of those things together, what you end up with is an individual migration. So what we're going to be doing is writing a couple of different migrations, telling the migrate module what our source data is, telling the migrate module what the destination is, a user or a node or so forth, telling migrate how to map between the source and destination so we can keep a map of individual rows, and also how each of those different fields, source fields and destination fields, relate to one another and any transformation of data that needs to happen during the process. Thank <laughs> you.